We are back with more two-wheel drive warfare from Bearfield Raceways in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So far, Mike Stowe's bad dog is chopping down hard on the number one position, with Wayne Roush in second and Roger Simon in third. But the dog fight's not over yet. Wayne Roush is about to go after the dog once more, this time in the 82 Dodge Ram he calls the Little Red Truck. Wayne sitting on top of a lightweight Engler-built chassis, powered by over 500 cubic inches of supercharged Chrysler Hemi. Just what he needs to send the bad dog running with his tail between his legs. Let's see if the little red truck has what it takes to snatch number one from the jaws of the bad dog and put it back into the hands of Wayne Rouse. Look out, here he comes. back strong. I don't believe he's going to get a hold of Stoll. Stoll currently your leader at 291.8. Wayne Roush fires too close to the ground in his last shot at the lead. Well, two-wheel drive, the weight's critical. Looked like he had it hit pretty well, but you just never really did get locked in too well. Yeah, the Firestone tires, I think the CPEX are working a little bit better today. You have the Firestones on this truck and the CPEX on the other. That's right. <laughs> and it's sort of a, you're sort of hedging your bet, getting one of them to work and take your chances with the other set. That's right. During the winter season, the, the, the Firestones, on average, did just a little bit better in the CPEX. I think summer it might be reversed. Spike growls up to the line next from Springfield, Ohio, unleashed by the Humphrey brothers, with Mark Hare behind the wheel. Let's see if Mark and Spike can challenge the bad dog to an Aries-powered fight for first place. Hare, unable to keep Mad Dog Spike team long enough to take the lead. Well, Mark, it's kind of a close but no cigar situation for you this afternoon. It looked like it was a pretty good run. Couldn't keep, couldn't keep the front end up, though. It was bobbing up and down and just couldn't get it to stay up for you. Yeah, I didn't want to stay up. It, it, it was kind of rough, and I like it was and unhook, and it just, just didn't want to stay in there and glide like she usually does. Yeah, I had uh, Bill Humphrey down there. Yeah, and get up, dog, get up, but it just would, it wouldn't get up and stay up. It was just a, kind of a jumpy run for you. Yeah, I don't know. The track's kind of rocky, and it's, it's not consistent like some of them are. Right. Up next is another home state Hoosier, Jim Mowry and his speed wagon. Right now, the business at hand, REO speed wagon. Decatur, Indiana, they call home. Driver's ready to go. Supercharged engine set right on the nose of the vehicles. Two-wheel drive, super modified. Competition on the TNT Redman All-American Pulling Series. Boo! Something let go right there. Motor's still running. I don't know exactly what the pop was from. He could have lifted a supercharger belt. We'll have to wait and see. The helmet comes off the driver. Since Jim didn't make it past the official start line, he'll get a second chance to make a run later. Here comes Lee O.K. up to the line next, driving the Ares-equipped driller from Lewis Run, Pennsylvania. Let's see if he can drill his way right past the bad dog for number one. Normally this engine runs in the top fuel cars and drag racing are funny cars. It'll power them at well over 250 to 260 miles an hour. Right now, Leo just wants to get out 300 feet of real bad clay in Fort Wayne, Indiana. All he wants to do is go further than 291 feet, 8 inches. He'll be satisfied with that. A good run for Leo K, but not nearly enough distance to steal the lead. Not too bad, Leo, but it got down there to the end when the weight came on you really skied the front end. We were probably 100 pounds light in the front. Uh, motor sounded good, though, and it was, I still got you probably in the top five, so it wasn't all that bad. No, it wasn't too bad at all. Up next is Jesse Pendleton behind the wheel of his classic rig from Linden, Ohio. 
This is only the second or third time out for the truck, we understand. It's called Rough Cut. It's a 30s models truck, a Diamond T truck, I think is the official body style on it. It comes out, Chrysler Hemi engine. Jesse, phenomenally famous for running what we call a fat motor. You watch it before he gets ready to run and when he gets finished, you will see some flames coming out. He runs a lot of fuel, a lot of lead in his engine. The rough cut coming out now, Jess Pendleton. Rough cut just can't cut it today. Coming up way short of the distance to be. Well, I'll tell you what, in a two-wheel drive class, anything goes. It's certainly an interesting piece you got here. Thank you. We tried to build something a little different. We uh, run a tractor for several years, and it was a little bit different. So when we decided to go with the truck, we wanted the same thing. Well, I, I tell you what, I love that hood ornament. I'm not sure what it is, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just call it a donkey, since this may be on the air. All right. <laughs> The fur is still flying here in Fort Wayne as Mark Hare Spike nips at the heels of Mike Stowe's Bad Dog and Leo Kay drills past Wayne Roush for third. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more two-wheel drive warfare in just a minute. We're back for the conclusion of today's two-wheel drive dogfight from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Here again to take one more shot is Jim Mowry and the Speedwagon. Remember, Jim ran out of luck way before he ran out of track in his first run today. Now it looks like the Speedwagon is ready to go. Let's see what he can do. Oh no, more bad luck for Jim Mowry. His speed wagon catches fire, but still can't manage to burn up much track. Ken Lamont hitches a ride into town next on the Midnight Express from Crossville, Illinois. Let's see if he has the ticket to send Mike Stowe on a one-way trip to the dog pound this afternoon. The Midnight Express gets derailed and grinds to a halt way short of its final destination. Ken, I know you're not going to be real, real thrilled about that run, but the uh, motor sounded like it was running real good, and uh, but you just didn't get, ever get a hold of anything out there. No, I didn't, John. I, I think I'm going to label this, instead of the Midnight Express tour, it might be the Nightmare Express tour. <laughs> I, I don't know. Luck's going to have to fall this way one of these days. It will. It'll come back around. Always it does. 41 Dodge, Dave Beebery. Dan Beebrick doing the driving. Jim Brockman owned vehicle. Goes under the name of In-Laws and Outlaws. Local fellow, hometown boy. I tell you, it's really strange the luck of the draw in this class. Beebrick driving Brockman's yellow truck. That's what we're looking at now. They call this their hometown. He draws, and his boss draws right behind him at the bottom of the field. So this could kind of be dramatic. Build a little drama into this thing. shot it looks like he will pull up into the top five spot believe me it's not over till the fat lady sings we have two more left on the TNT red man series two more remaining Dan a pretty good run actually uh, I don't know you moved into the probably I think third place on that uh, we couldn't decide back there what to do weight wise and finally when I did decide uh, I think I went the wrong gear I should have been down one gear well, I don't know. It, uh, it was lugging the motor pretty hard, but, uh, you know, it looks like you got it most out of it as you could. Yeah, I think so, but that's kind of hard on the engine when you do it that way. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's the results, and it didn't look like everything held together. So far, so good, yeah. Okay, we'll wait and see what Jim can do. Uh, I hope he can get it out. Out on the heels of his own hometown hired gun, here's the boss himself, Jim Brockman, loading up to fire the next round at number one in this two-wheel drive fight to the finish. 
New Haven, Indiana, he calls home. This is his hometown track. He wants to win it for you. Kind of be a Cinderella story if he can. He drew at the bottom of the field. Brockman definitely capable of making the horsepower at the track. We'll hold it. Brockman not going to do it. Strong run, drawing late in the field. Jim Brockman just doesn't have enough horsepower to chase the bad dog out of his own backyard today. It was a good looking run, but just just couldn't get any ground speed, really. No, the sled's dragging pretty hard today. Uh, we moved some weight to the back, trying to you know think that we could get a little bit more ground speed by waiting the back end, but uh, unfortunately, the, the sled just beat us. That's all, you know. This is it, the last chance today to snatch first place away from the strong jaws of the bad dog. Lloyd Hauser scampers up to the line again next with yet another member of the Rat Pack. This time he's going after the big cheese in the Daddy Rat Chevy. Let's see if Daddy Rat can gnaw a big bite out of the bad dog. Bad Dog is going to stay on top as the fur finally stops flying in today's fierce two-wheel drive competition. Yeah, John, Dad will be real happy when I call him tonight. He wasn't too happy after last night. You know, I mean, with the way the brakes and everything went last night, you know, we just got to, we're in a bad position in the day. It just turned around. You just got to keep in there and keep trying. That's all you can do. Well, you know, in this two-wheel drive class, it's, you know, uh, horsepower and uh, tire pressure, weight and everything. And, and the guys are so evenly matched, it's, it's a tough battle every weekend. Oh yeah, John, this class is probably the most competitive class in track pulling right now, that, or even in the past that I can even remember. There's so many vehicles now with so good of equipment, that it, it's just unreal. The, guys, the guy that gets it together and has the right draw, and gets his weight right and everything, he's going to be the man to beat, there ain't no doubt. Right now underneath the... Pulling. It's the sport of power. And no pulling vehicle better demonstrates it than the modified 4x4 Texas Rose of Manuel Marino. In two months, he's vaulted from fifth to first in the point standings. His edge has been the biggest automotive type engine in any pulling vehicle on the Redman TNT circuit today. 704 cubic inches of aluminum block monster motor. Marino has a narrow six and a half point lead over Bob and Scott Smith, a father and son team. From there, it's almost 70 points back to third place and the nationwide truck of Jerry Weaver. Chevrolet dominates in the modified 4x4 class, claiming the first three places and eight of the top ten. Meanwhile, side-by-side -side monster truck racing and two-wheel drive truck pulling roar into Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, October 16th and 17th. And the Indiana Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis hosts a pulling and monster truck racing spectacular Saturday, November 14th.